Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. In a duty-bound, tradition-steeped and people-oriented monarchy, Camilla, Queen Consort is a glaring stain on the credibility of the institution. The recent news that King Charles III wants to distance himself from her in order to safeguard the fate of Princess Catherine's children is not surprising, but it needs to happen in order for the royal family hearts him so. For some, Camilla has been a controversial figure and there was little question as to her level of influence with Charles. But now her influence has proved more harmful than helpful. Camilla's place in the royal family has always been controversial from the very beginning. That's because the public has never forgiven her for playing a part in breaking up Charles's marriage to the people favorite Princess Diana. Those nine months were a selfish bubble, but they also created a legacy of broken trust which still plagues the royal family today. No wonder King Charles seems to be doing what he can to protect his grandchildren, especially Princess Catherine's kids, from the type of exploitation and betrayal that characterized Camilla's history. It is not a king and queen that love conquers all kind of story for Camilla's rise to the aforenoted title. Instead, it is the story of a woman who took an opportunity to rise to the top with little regard for the consequences. Her wedding to King Charles is not the culmination of a romantic conquest, but years of calculation in her own best interest. But, especially with all the attention on her within royal dom, what has she actually done to help hold up an institution other than fracture it and create controversy? King Charles has been redefining royal appearances lately, with a greater emphasis on Catherine and her children taking center stage. So where does Camilla fit into all this? Pushed aside, as he rightfully should be. Her rapport with the younger royals has always been cold and unhelpful. What they have been met with instead is this icy indifference a lack of caring for their welfare and a relentless focus on fortifying her own standing. This is the exact opposite of what Princess Catherine would do. The distinctions are glaring. Catherine has become the embodiment of the modern monarchy with her grace, poise and sense of duty. Now, she has interpreted her duty with dignity facing the heavy responsibilities that come up to mold the crown's future. Her kids, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis, are being taught about their history and the importance of who they are. By contrast, Camilla seems more concerned with her personal legacy than the institutional legacy she claims to represent. She does not bring people together, she lacks the qualities of a monarch. It still is a remnant of wrongdoings. Always putting the self before the duty. The king's reference to his grandchildren shows he is cognizant of where the monarchy's future lies, with those who are nurtured and guided from an early age. Public feeling about Camilla has always been mixed, but it has also always had an air of genuine service and duty to it. Of late, it has become ever clearer that she does not win hearts and minds. She has failed to position herself, queen consort in waiting. The destruction of a royal marriage, beloved by millions around the world from whom she had no right to be taken, was something her involvement in has passed without mention. The public are tiring of Camilla while King Charles turns his attention to the grandchildren. Alongside her oh-so-polished charms, she has long been adored by the public for not just her looks and fashion but the poise and grace in which she carries herself. She's the very definition of being royal, her responsibility towards the monarchy, as well as its people, is tremendous, yet she embraces it despite all odds with utmost grace. On the other hand, Camilla's attempts at shoring up her position within ye old monarchy have been transparent and honestly pretty sad. Pretending to be the dutiful queen consort, her selfishness, manipulations and ambition is apparent for the public to see. Still, no matter how much she has tried to ingratiate herself not only with the public but also with the royal family, Camilla cannot shake off Princess Diana. The dark cloud of Diana's influence still looms large, both over the royal family and over Camilla's own reputation. No number of public engagements or photo ops will prevent Camilla from carrying the stain of Diana's destruction on her soul. Even King Charles is keeping her at a distance, and that says a lot about the damage she has done. 
Camilla's legacy will not be one of harmony or grace. It will not represent servitude or bondage. Instead, it will represent division, deceit and greed. This is an image of her ascension not as queen consort, a victory but rather as a somber reflection on the division in the family. The scarring betrayals and the sacrifices done in order to push her ambitions further. Because as the king turns his attention onto his grandchildren, Camilla is already losing her touches. The monarchy, it is widely accepted, is at a crossroads. With Princess Catherine at the forefront with her children, the next generation represents the future of the institution. These will be the ones to take up that mantle going forward, keeping the monarchy relevant in an ever-evolving world. On the other hand, Camilla signifies the past, the past of scandal, controversy, and treason. She should not have attempted to place herself at the center of the royal family because the monarchy is entering a new era. That has become apparent. King Charles's actions, the distancing he has chosen to establish, are a leisurely but heartwarming development. The king realizes that the future of the monarchy must be secured and that his self-centered woman should not be a part of his grandchildren's life. Members of the royal family, such as Camilla, cannot continue to hold back the family. The general public is longing to see all of this behind it entirely. The new beginning claims old values of duty, devotion, and unity. However, it begins with two wombs with two children, not a queen with self-centeredness. Camilla and Charles have been in the limelight for too long. The destiny of the monarchy will be determined by individuals who understand the meaning of duty. Camilla's entrance into the royal kin has generated controversy since she seduced the king while he was married to Princess Diana, a scandal that has never totally vanished. Even worse, there is a significant difference between her and figures such as Princess and or Catherine. They exude power and dignity as well as a royal sense of responsibility. On the contrary, Camilla is a quite humorous phantom clinging to an earlier age. She lacks the elegance and sophistication that Princess Catherine has utilized to steal the public's attention. She has failed to gain public favor throughout her efforts because he believed she was someplace she shouldn't be. The tension between Camilla and the younger cohort of royals is palpable. For years, rumors have persisted that her relationship with Kate and William, as well as the late Kinga, has been atrocious. It just goes to show, as within a royal family, so too in a common household. People believe her rapport with Prince William is strained. And Camilla's not buzzy, William and Kate are getting popular because their modern abridge to the royal gig is working better for younger people than Camilla. Instead her influence within the family appears largely to be self-serving, rather than a genuine attempt to improve the royally, while generally coming across as self-interested. Camilla seems to be more concerned with saving her own career than supporting the royal family as a concept unlike Princess Anne, who has shown unfaltering commitment to her responsibilities for decades. There is Princess and who stays humble and keeps doing her job, which feels like the complete opposite of what Camilla does, namely, she would appear to hardly ever do an act without being self-serving. Camilla, on the other hand, seems hell-bent to keep her head down and maintain her rank in their pecking order despite it tarnishing the royal family's image. The status of Camilla as queen consort, and the deservedly hot topic of if she merits that title, is still an ongoing discussion. The general consensus is that not only doesn't Camilla deserve this title based on her past, but she also simply does not seem qualified for such a key role to the public. With a title like Queen Consort comes an expectation of dignity, grace and fellow feeling with the people. Camilla, now the Queen Consort who has been in the public eye for years, never managed to create that connection. That said, we hear a lot about the influence she has on King Charles because many people think that she rules him with an iron fist and this is not beneficial for the monarchy at all. It is believed that her role in decision-making process may jeopardize the longevity of the institution. It's clear that Camilla's private pursuits are rarely compatible with either the needs of the royal family or a successful Charles reign, and perhaps that's why palace aides see two years as their limit. Additionally, 
her alienation from the younger generation in the royal family stands in stark contrast to the hard work Kate and William have done to make the monarchy more contemporary and relatable to people. The fact that she fights adapting to the times and is unyielding in her outmoded royal lifestyle is now seen more as a hindrance than an asset. With Camilla still looming around like a cloud of controversy and bad blood, the monarchy is unable to move on. Even with PR assistance to paint her in a better light, Camilla is still viewed by many as the third person of Charles and Diana's broken marriage, and the public reaction to her remains lukewarm at best. Notably, this lingering mistrust means she can never actually win the people over, especially when they are compared to the well-liked Catherine. The intrusion of Camilla's family into royal matters adds to the critiques, however. As her siblings have attempted to gain sway in royal circles, rumors have circulated suspicious of how Camilla really feels. Is her interest only in promoting the monarchy, or is it really about gaining power and status for herself and her family? Even this well-known discretion surrounding the royal family seems to be breached by Camilla's family, and it makes one wonder what on earth is driving their motives. It also prompts speculation about the legacy she will leave as queen consort, should that day ever come to pass. Unfortunately, it is probably not going to be the good one. Unlike someone like Queen Elizabeth II with her steel-like devotion, or Princess Diana, who is remembered for her compassion and kindness, there are fears Camilla's legacy will be divisive and controversial. The scandals of her past always seemed to haunt her, and the way she handled things in the royal family only exacerbated the tensions. Instead of uniting, she has divided. The new era of monarchy tells a very different story and it is becoming clearer that King Charles may turn out to be a better monarch without much focus on Camilla. It is people like Catherine, William and their children who represent the future of the monarchy, and the characteristics that I think people want their royal family to have are being real with integrity excellence commitment sincerity 100% engagement in their work. On the other hand, Camilla represents everything that is centuries old and each time we look at her, we are reminded of a wrong leaf turned. But as the royal family starts to eyes beyond the horizon, it seems unavoidable that Camilla will gradually continue to be frozen out, her voice being silenced by the next generation who are slowly coming into their own. As we examine Camilla's position ever more closely through the lens of royal family day-to-day -day life, her role appears less and less merely redundant but increasingly harmful to future success for the monarchy. She has not updated, not trusted the public, and not been effective in the institution she claims to care about. While the royal family is still navigating its way through the challenges of modern society, there is no longer a space for an obstacle like Camilla. She has defied the odds and not only remained within the institution but now wields enormous power, hence the frustration. Just thinking about how someone with such a notoriously infamous history, in one of the more, for lack of better word, notorious love triangle scenarios this century, is on track to become queen consort is pretty bonkers. This is a woman who helped sink the foundation of King Charles's ship, that union between him and Princess Diana, in which millions around the globe made an emotional investment. But almost 70 years on and Camilla has wriggled her way to the top of hierarchy. When I think of Princess Diana, I think she was truly one of a kind with her poise, kindness and dedication to the people in her life that made her an international icon. Diana was everything a royal should be, treating people kindly, understanding the plight of her raw grief-stricken soul, and truly committed to being where she was. It was her deep connection with people that made her stand out, and earned the heartwarming label of the people's princess. When she died suddenly in 1997, millions mourned her loss as a unique lady whose absence can never be filled. In the mournfulness, Camilla monitored from outside her darkness ready to finally step out. Slowly, she reappeared, first as Charles's girlfriend, then, after a long, controversial courtship his wife, something that shocked many people including me. It somehow seemed puzzling to think that the very man who had once married Diana, a symbol of poise and perfection, could now be paired with the same person who caused her so much pain. I know many people have their own reservation about Camilla, but she has been instrumental at finding her niche amongst the royals. 
Camilla has also taken on a slew of royal duties while accompanying Charles to many public events and working hard to restore her image. However, and despite what the YouTube name sounds like, there remains a constant underlying assumption that she will never be accepted, sitting next to a harmless bit of jealousy. With new allegations, from insiders here and abroad about the effect always looming behind the wings of the royal family on behalf of King Charles III in trying to protect his few grandchildren, especially those belonging to Princess Catherine, Kate Middleton, against Camilla. Perhaps that, combined with some degree of changing dynamics within the royal family could see Camilla assuming a different role. There has long been speculation over Camilla's power over Charles, but some have suggested that her influence is not what it might seem. In that case, if he's really siding with the grandchildren over his wife, that's potentially a little bit more of Charles's loyalty tilting away from Camilla. It also raises questions over Camilla's life in the royal family as well as wider issues about the future of the monarchy itself, which continues to face criticism about its role in a modern society. Prince William and his children hold huge symbolism for the monarchy's future, as does Catherine. Ever since marrying into the royal family in 2011, Kate has been a fantastic addition to the family. She has shown with grace and dedication in her role, much the same way Diana did, and quickly become a fan favorite. It is of the utmost importance, however, to her that their children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis, are all right as they are the future of the royal family. But they are also like the light and the dark, with Camilla representing the darkness, a reminder of all those scandals that have lurked around the royal family for decades. Diana still feels the hurt and betrayal of being embarrassed by her. One struggles to see a monarchy moving forward with her so prominent. The fact Prince Charles chose to stay away from Camilla and instead meet up with his grandchildren suggests he knows as much. The waning of Camilla, and good riddance after all this time poisoning our people indicating she is somehow more worthy than found in most homes. As welcome as this reprieve is, there is also a palpable frustration that the transition should have occurred much sooner. Charles had known for a long time that in order to make his marriage to Camilla continuous, she needed to occupy an important position within the monarchy. It is much to do with Camilla himself, the irreparable hit the royal family has taken with their reputations. Camilla his troubles with Charles, mess of the marriage they had in Diana and her image has sickened British people toward the royal family. I've always found her attempts to present herself as a cross-discipline, all-in royal member to ring hollow. She might do charitable stuff and be there with Charles at events this month, however, she only seems to be fulfilling the duties instead of actually taking on her obligations, kind of like a Broadway understudy but for queens which is in such stark contrast to someone like Kate, who makes an honest effort to actually serve her royal purpose and wants so desperately to change the world for the better. By contrast, Camilla seems far more concerned with doing what is in her own best interests than what is in the interests of the firm. Even when the public engagement is largely deserved and plenty of it has been directed at Elizabeth Warren herself throughout this election cycle she would rather wear the mantle of a victim instead of accountability. It has only pushed her away even more from the public, who can see right through her playing on their compassion. There must be a level of frustration within the royal family itself as great strides by people like Kate and William who have worked tirelessly to modernize things and make the monarchy relatable to the general public gets lost in the shuffle because some know it all. Hack journalist puts Camilla on blast. They embraced social media, participated in candid interviews and tried to relate to the younger audience. But despite their best efforts, the Camilla influence over the institution remains. Her oh-so-much scandals, controversies and just existence remind us of the royal family's past mistakes in real time. The question is, when oh when can Camilla gain the public's forgiveness? I believe the answer is no. The damage is too great, and she'll always be remembered as playing a vital role in the breakup of Charles and Diana's marriage. She may well continue to have a place in the royal family however, but never full acceptance. Focus has now shifted to the likes of Kate and William, who have shown that they are ready to step into those shoes when the time comes. This brings me to a final, yet unpleasant, conclusion. It is time to end the Camilla show. 
The monarchy looks to people such as Kate, William and their kids for survival. They are everything the public wants from their royals, principled, hardworking and very much down to earth. By contrast, Camilla represents a chapter in the royal family's history that so many would like to forget. When you think back on the path that led Camilla into the monarchy, there is a sensation of malaise at best and absurdity at worst. Largely because of how much she has damaged it, Camilla has been able to keep her hold over the royal institution. Though a reminder of the monarchy's dark past, she is ever-present. In other words, Camilla is now perceived as part of the problem rather than a solution by the royal family when looking to its future. Definitively, the relation between Camilla and Willem is multifaceted and thorny. For years, tabloids have been flooded with rumors about her troubled relationship with William based on the idea that he has always held a grudge against her. He has never welcomed her as queen consort, always remembering his beloved mother who was pictured with unflattering headlines but also one of the first to be victimized in our thinking. In that regard, William's conflict is both personal and a microcosm of his fight to honor the memory of his mother in a family that has never fully accepted her. Although Camilla wants to show off her royal interest with peace, the recent allegations of favoritism have raised tensions between them. For William, it is the unwanted reminder that her presence will continue to overshadow his mother's legacy, a gentle soul whose warmth and empathy endure in the hearts of many. After another recent confrontation over this, William was firm that he will not allow her to overstep the mark within the family dynamic. In an unmistakably undiplomatic context, his statement echoed throughout the palace. It was a defining moment for him and made clear his decision to finally vaporize her role within the family and remove any public appeal he may have had toward her. For him, Camilla is more than an interloper, she is a living symbol of a life he will not accept. Their run-in left Camilla seething, revealing her own deep-seated insecurities and sense of entitlement. For some reason, she seems to think the younger royals should embrace her wholeheartedly. This is a ludicrously naive belief that indicates just how completely out of touch even Meghan's royal immigration hysteria has left her with the complexities and relationships of her old family. Rather than winning them over, she sees their uncertainty as a personal attack against her increasingly tenuous place in the royal pecking order. This is not the first time churches and rivalries are nothing new to royal families, but once again, and Camilla clearly lacks exposure in these realities with her background as wife of heir. Witnesses afterward to the chaos said that enough was enough, as did reports that Camilla stormed out of the dressing specifically in tears away from where she normally kept her cool. Though emotional showings that so many can relate to ultimately reveal her weak spot in the role she wants so badly. Instead of embodying the poised grace that a queen is expected to portray, she fell prey to rage, revealing the raw feelings hiding beneath her carefully curated facade. The four hullabaloo of this incident are extensive, suggesting her aspiration secrecy is a chip more honesty than not before assumed. King Charles is now also caught between the demands of his wife and this whole new situation concerning his son. And he has been defending Camilla for years. But he is a father and needs to think about his responsibilities towards his own blood too. He's caught at an impossible fork. Will he run to his wife or put his son before everything else? The decision is further complicated by the fact William's chances of taking the throne ultimately rests on Charles's handling of these familial disputes. Charles prepares for the fallout from this spiraling family feud. The monarchy is a knife edge away this leaves Camilla exposed at her royal household her reaction to the whole thing could not be more excruciatingly embarrassing even for her tireless pursuit of acknowledgement. Despite courting the younger royals, notably William and Harry for years, she has seemingly failed to win their approval. This latest clash directly speaks to her continuing fight for legitimacy. What is completely missing from Miss Stroud's argument, however, is that the royal family are not merely background props for her ambitions, they are literally a place where her insecurities can be laid out on display to the world for all to see. The ongoing saga does not augur well for the monarchy though. So many open wounds of the past never healed, especially over Diana's passing, something William knows all too well. You can feel the tension between him and Camilla, 
but also ever more broadly over the royal story and he will not abide his mother not being front and center. While the royal family weathers this storm, it's clear that the battle for acceptance and recognition is still unfinished. With no one willing to yield, the specter of more discord looms. All in all, Camilla is not safe as a royal. Simply put, she has shown flaws herself in the way of not being able to earn the respect and rapport amongst the younger royals. The tussle with William is merely a manifestation of a much bigger problem as she reveals her position within a family that have never quite accepted her. As the drama escalates, it will become clearer than ever that Camilla's ambitions could cause even greater damage than in her own family, perhaps to the monarchy for a generation. The answer is not only if she will survive this latest storm, but the way in which the royal family will handle the increasing unrest that her existence continues to stir. William, who never wavered in his loyalty to his mother, has cast doubt on Camilla's deep level of zealous castle vivification. That particularly favored Camilla in Diana's never-ending war, which Camilla has found difficult to fight. It has become evident over time that William's hatred is not some mood or phase, but a reaction to what he sees as an affront to the memory of his mother. Even though Camilla tries to project a supportive wife of King Charles, she has repeatedly acted the other way. Her actions that are inconsistent with her public persona suggested insincerity. She may want to paint herself as one big happy blended family, but behind the scenes she doesn't seem to care much about how William and Harry feel, just that they do what she wants them to. The way that this manipulative dynamic plays out in the latter chapters is reminiscent of her relationship with Charles daffily duped while Diana grabbed at power. But the facade that Camilla has built as queen consort is showing cracks. The appearances, designed to warm both the souls of a nation and the hearts of its royals, feel even more calculated, mechanical. But observers say her attempts to connect with the younger royals often fall flat, highlighting a sad chasm. And yet, rather than being embraced, she often faces their disdain. Suggested GIF a celebratory Goku from the Dragon Ball Z anime where he's seen in an upward point of victory, where his arms are raised, credits to anime reaction yeah. It also adds on that reports of her showing favoritism towards her kids has broke the last straw and only aggravated existing enmity. Moreover, there is a new complexity that arises from the endless speculation of how Camilla has affected Charles. While Charles has tried to project togetherness with his wife, Sources suggest that Camilla's ambitions frequently eclipse his. It is rumored that she wishes to remake the royal image into something more modern, while still keeping some of those oldest traditions associated with royalty alive. This duplicity creates an uncomfortable tension that others in the family, namely William, have noticed and even interpreted as a threat to his plan for the future monarchy. The resulting tension leaves little room for rational discourse, resulting in explosive confrontations that further exacerbate the divide. William's unwillingness to accept what he sees as Camilla overstepping the mark has turned their relationship into a prize fight of sorts with high stakes. One false move could mean more controversy in the headlines. Every disagreement is not just interpersonal. So much of the psychological burden resulting from these ongoing confrontations is frustrated, Camilla comes to terms with the fact that her efforts to integrate herself into the royal family have been challenged. Camilla's anthropological tension is no mere personal dilemma, it symbolizes an institution's persistent struggle to remain relevant and dressed in modern clothes even as the seams fray around traditional garments. This ongoing struggle depicts a monarchy on the brink, personality versus tradition and burden of public scrutiny. The consequences of this turmoil extend beyond the palace walls, influencing public perceptions of the royal family. Regardless of the appeal, Camilla's reputation is hampered by her distant connection with William and the legacy she attempts to craft will only blow up in her face when she tries to fit in. That hate, against her growing dominion, may well find new cause to breed isolation, not only from the straying younger royals but from a public newly hooked on Diana's legacy. In seeking an air of royal respectability, Camilla has failed to grasp this vital element of royalty, that the public mood matters. The monarchy survives on its image, 
and Camilla tends to reinforce the idea that she cannot completely fit into the royal family she has painted herself as wanting to join so badly as we almost never hear anything positive about her. Widespread unhappiness only ignites uncertainty about her ability to be queen consort. Each conflict revealing a deeper fissure in their familial relations. This tension between William and Camilla represents a larger power dynamic, one that will likely determine the fate of the monarchy. But with each side locked in their positions, the real question is, who will win this high-stakes game of royal chess? Camilla has worked to build relationships where she can but a lack of authenticity has always been an uncomfortable barrier for her. She may well try and portray herself as a stepmother who cares, but her scheming tactics and thirst for power destroy any goodwill she managed to establish. Her divide from the younger royals goes beyond personal animus, it reflects a fundamental values and vision difference for the monarchy's future. With the royal home still grappling with this lingering upheaval, one thing we know, Camilla will remain a source of scandal and criticism for easy foreseeable future. What's admirable on paper, her desire to reinvent a role in the monarchy that is not as clearly delineated or powerful as one might think, is fraught with challenges. William and his supporters who push back against her every move also remind her that none of this is a given. This dispute encapsulates broader difficulties confronting the monarchy as it seeks to reform in a changing world. The struggle between tradition and progress is more than just a subplot, it is central to the royal family trying to maintain relevance. Where Camilla pushes her luck in this dynamic, she meets friction, and so it goes, a precarious balance that's liable to tip over any minute now. The story of her relationship with Camilla and her status in the royal family mostly resembles a Shakespearean drama full of lies, desires, and relentless hunger for power. Raw feelings and tensions of her relationship with William reflects the existing feuds within the monarchy as a whole, showing just how opposite were her dreams from being fulfilled in reality. You can imagine the familial strife inherent in these tangled ties, and it is gratifying to watch her carefully constructed facade slowly crumble. The very nature of Camilla is anathema to the age-old standards adhered to by the royal institution. From mistress to queen consort, her path is littered with scandal but still she covets a degree of acceptance that remains just out of reach. It is tempting to watch her struggles, if only in contrast to the grace and dignity that Diana always embodied. Every public appearance that includes Camilla is imbued with the inescapable reality that she can never completely emerge from under the shadow of the woman who enthralled so many millions. To William, the fight against Camilla is not only a personal battle, it is about preserving his mother's legacy and, in particular, protecting Diana's memory from becoming but a footnote in history. The intensity of his devotion conveys the love he has for a lady who embodies warmth and humility characteristics that contrast with Camilla. Their differences in personality could not be more stark. While William's journey is one of sincere truth, Camilla's longings are strategic and rooted in gaining approval. Camilla in every public act is like a forcibly contrived ritual, acted out, staged yet devoid of sincerity. There is a stark contrast between her public persona as the dutiful wife of King Charles and the reality of how she acted when no one was looking. But her seemingly stoic exterior as the paragon of royal duty cannot quench all rumors of her manipulative personality. But her demand for obedience from William and Harry is more than just a personal failing. Rather than encouraging love and connection, she feeds her need for control which ends up repelling those who she wants to bring closer. At least her battles with William will only have very little family disputes repercussions. They echo through the pages of royal history, where questions have arisen and challenges mounted regarding the place of monarchy. Camilla is also trying to present a more modern royal image, but it often comes off as self-serving. She tries to assert her dominance as a person in the royal establishment. But her effectiveness is hampered by the fact that she on some level does not connect to the people around her. That gulf she preserves is painfully present, reinforcing this sensation of her as an outsider. Each new instance of discord confirms this fact more starkly. The fact that she simply cannot command the respect and loyalty of her younger royals speaks loudly about her. To be welcomed as part of the royal family, 
but having none of the love and compassion that comes with it. Seeing the harsh treatment she receives from those she seeks to win over is practically poetic. Their disdain for her and loyalty to Diana is a sentiment that seems widely shared. For anyone who delights in Camilla's discomfort, the evidence of her failings is piling up fast, as if it were all being scripted by a subversive playwright intent on thwarting her ambitious pursuits. And the truth of what Camilla wants compared with her powerful rival is glaring in the moment of confrontation. Her struggles through these arguments come from an emotional space that suggests deep-seated insecurity and a still unsatisfied craving for affirmation. A perfect contrast from the regal image she seeks to portray, a vulnerable woman left reconciled with her own failures as she tearfully leaves the room. Although she tries to declare herself, her mind is still trapped in a spiral pigmented with shame and bitterness. Watching this battle play itself out is certainly a spectacle. Which leaves King Charles right in the middle of this shitstorm and, without a doubt, tasked with possibly the biggest challenge of his long life but his love for and lifelong support of Camilla, the woman he loves, clashes with his paternal responsibility to William. There is irrefutable tension on the part of he, which sets a tone of mystery behind palace walls. At such a crossroads, the monarchy here cannot afford to stumble at the wrong turn. Neither have the implications, with incredible pressure on Charles to balance this conflict. As this circus continues to unfold, we have to bear in mind the greater implications for the monarchy itself. Helping to set the tone of the public eye in looking at these divisions is a more ubiquitous and perennial conflict between tradition and modernity. Her family history, like hers, is hardly a story of an independent woman changing her life, it is about privilege and expectations passed on from mother to daughter through the generations. Every conflict, every manifestation in which it has been perceived as human reminds us all that the monarchy is subject to the same emotions that feel everything. For many, who have held grudges against Camilla for years, seeing her handle these treacherous waters is some kind of vindication. The elements that appeal in her tale include her teething problems becoming part of the royal family, her failure to win the confidence and respect of William, and her continuing search for validation. And with every new disclosure, there comes a fresh infusion of glee, a pleasure derived from viewing her as an interloper and outsider in a place she has yet to truly earn. The monarchy as it stands now is being faced with more challenges to adapt itself to the needs of a changing world. Camilla has a long way to go in modernizing its image, and this only adds fuel to the fire that highlights where she continues to fall short. The public perception of her will always be inextricably linked to memories of Diana, and the swirling drama around this plot just reinforces that idea, fucking Camilla will never escape Diana. Murmurs of dissatisfaction linger on, a reminder of the indomitable spirit of a woman who has long since passed yet who many admirers could never truly let go. The Camilla and the royal family saga is a rich tapestry woven with ambition, rivalry, and emotion. The constant difficulties she faces only highlight the complexities of life as royalty and what it takes to be fully welcomed into its hallowed halls. Every revelation of her struggles is a hit of pleasure for the people who are having fun at her expense. A glimpse into the flawed life of a woman trying to find her place while constantly butting heads against those around her. The drama is playing out with the future of the monarchy hanging in the balance and causes one to wonder, will Camilla ever really belong or shall she forever be an outsider among a family so stubbornly opposed to her presence? Attempts to ingratiate herself with the young royals using ancient feudal methods, which should never succeed in the 21st century, but risk doing so if or as permitted by delusions of entitlement and enormous insecurity, had catastrophic consequences for her. Far from demanding, she consistently distances herself from her peers, and it is startling to see such unguarded displays of emotion that shine a light on our beloved anti-heroine's exposed throat in what has been seemingly always designed for the taking. Camilla's affair wasn't just something that happened in the past, it was an open infidelity that destroyed Princess Diana's life and undermined any faith Britons had in the royal family. It was a disgraceful, selfish act that has not lost its unforgivable quality in 2023 to maintain her romantic relationship with Charles throughout his marriage. Much as Andrew Morton has tried to rewrite history, 
there is no escaping Camilla's central role in the divorce and for many her presence must always be a reminder of that betrayal inside the royal family. More than the Princess of Wales, Diana was a sacred spirit of compassion, kindness and life. Camilla, of course, represents everything we hate about the aristocracy, entitlement, manipulation and a psychopathic ambition that puts self-interest above all else. Unlike what you see in movies where a character becomes powerful through people respecting or admiring them, she rose to power over the destruction of others starting with Diana. Though she tries to act as if she is a caring royal wife, the reason behind it perhaps is manipulation that binds history black between her and legacy. Camilla, her bio line to be as clear from here on out as the mud is coxed for betrayal, treachery and discord, not one of duty, honor or public service. Her egocentric ambition and cynical maneuvering, in her latest effort to rehabilitate herself as Diana's former husband's second wife, a woman synonymous with the lady who came between them, is too much. She will never earn the public's approval, no matter how many of these boring royal events she attends or meaningless charities stumping on her behalf. The past won't go away, each moment in the royal public eye a painful reminder of the choices she made not only damaging Diana but also inflicting what we could call long-lasting trauma on the royal family and the British people. And, more importantly, for all that Camilla has been an awful force in the monarchy. And, of course, her great power over Charles is only a matter of historical record, she has certainly influenced his style and thinking to a large extent. And her presence has ushered in more discord instead of providing stability. She makes Charles look weaker and less in touch with the people. Camilla may have deliberately tried to come off publicly as her usual supportive self, but behind the scenes her actions are said to have rubbed family members the wrong way and, according to Ralph Source, affected relations particularly badly with William and Catherine, crediting another late royal use of shady retail therapy. Catherine and William embody the opposite of her, her traditionalist, self-consumed beliefs are very difficult to understand in a modern world. And the brazen audacity of Camilla. No matter how prejudicial she continues to be, she continuously reigns herself as part of the royal family. The astute who see through her manipulations, know she is anything but the altruistic character she likes to pretend. These desperate, calculated measures to solidify her legacy and position within the family speak volumes. It also speaks to the idea that she thinks public service will clear her sins of the past, but one of those sins was being the trigger for a difficult chapter in royal history. Leave aside the appalling taste of using this prestige for self-aggrandizing promotion of her spurious causes, her very association with, rather than representing, the monarchy undermines its status around the world, antithetical, as it is, to everything duty, tradition and integrity should stand for. Camilla's conduct has diminished public confidence in the institution, and her higher profile just intensifies that distrust. No amount of charity work, or switching on the media machine can wipe away her place in our monarchy. Her reputation tarnished forever, her legacy one of treachery and malice, she will always be known as the woman who turned the royal family upside down. Grace and merit, however, were not determining factors in Camilla's path to power, she reached it by scandalously breaking up the most beloved royal marriage in generations. To millions, however, she will always be the woman who broke Diana's heart and destroyed the illusion of a perfect royal family. The tale Camilla tells is not one of redemption or transformation, but of a woman who reached the top not through virtue or reverence, but through self-serving ambition and expedience. In spite of the fact that she is now alongside Charles as he wears his crown, her title firmly in place, the truth is she will never win his heart or that of the British public. So she will always be an interloper, an outsider, a perpetual reminder of the darkest chapter in monarchy history. To many too still grieving Diana, and to anyone who's bothered to look beyond Camilla's home-wrecking illusion, her ranking is a snub. With the inner circle, she may have won in winning Charles's heart but she has lost the people, her real legacy being that of a woman who, seeking power and validation for herself, succeeded only in further splintering cracks within the monarchy she sought so desperately to breach. Camilla represents all that the monarchy should not be selfishness, duplicity, and total disdain for public feeling.
However, what is especially infuriating is how she's effortlessly woven herself into the royal family in spite of public weigh-in against her. The large-scale facelift of hers is largely nothing but PR. She has done everything she can to atone for what demons lay in her past. The royal status is not something she inherited, rather, she wormed her way up into it, taking advantage of Charles's weaknesses to make herself indispensable. She is a toxic influence on him, let's face it. This not only stains the throne but also the overall face of royalty. Now, Camilla has been this longtime toxic buddy in tow by Charles's being, pulling him more and more into the depths of public seclusion. The possibility that Charles would strip her of any royal duties is only possible because she has impacted large portions of the world like no one else in living memory. Charles pondering such knee-jerk action says it all. People haven't easily forgotten about how Camilla affected the royal family. Finally, whenever Camilla in royal garb appeared, she coincided the rest of her life association with the betrayal Diana suffered during marriage and the pain traumatizing causing past to death. To some, Camilla will always be the reason for Diana's plight which no title or crown can ever take away. And additionally, Camilla misguiding Charles for the worst. Charles has shunned the public, focused more on personal matters than those attached to his role as the man who will be king. And this has created some friction with William and Catherine, who are trying to modernize the firm and reflect more of Diana's legacy, for example about compassion, empathy, and being close to the people. This new direction, of course, is in complete contrast to the antiquated and elitist views Camilla represents. William and Catherine are reforming the monarchy over here, and her PR ability threatens that, image no three. Plus the public were meant to embrace Camilla, but they never really had a choice. The British public have been forced to accept Camilla with hardly a sniff of criticism and are supposed to just poly nicely over the sins she has committed against them. But one wonders why forgiveness as such should come when Camilla has never expressed real contrition for her part in ruining Diana's marriage or any sense that she has grown into a casket of royal duties. She now wears. Instead, she continues to project herself into a position that was never hers to take in the first place, holding on to power and authority while digging her own grave with ever-increasing public ire. And as for her legacy? Thus, the legacy, if we can even call it that, she leaves behind is a legacy of treachery and deceit. Diana is remembered through the drone of her humanitarian work, her charitable efforts and costs are seemingly unchallenged go in passing, as such things should be. Camilla's legacy will forever be tainted by the affair that shattered a family and brought a monarchy to its knees. This smug, subservient relaunch is absurd when viewed through the prism of her radical past. No amount of public engagements, ribbon-cutting or speeches delivered will ever remove her legacy as the woman who irrevocably broke the royal family. If, in the end, Charles agrees to strip her of her royal title and status, most will see it as a belated act of justice, an overdue acknowledgement that Camilla never deserved to be part of this club in the first place. It would be not just a personal failure for Camilla but also an indictment of those who have looked on in horror all these years as the blatantly unsuitable woman has gradually climbed her way to power. God know what would demonstrate that the monarchy is at last prepared to be accountable, to rectify its course and to remove elements of rot which has been permitted to endure for far too long. This is exactly the sort of justice opponents of Camilla have been waiting for. If they got rid of Camilla, this would be a loud and clear message that the monarchy is not a place for people wanting to profit from others. To have William and Catherine at the forefront would show a royal family moving beyond past controversies and scandals. Take Camilla out of the equation so that the monarchy could finally concentrate on mending its relationship with a wounded public. After stepping away from the role of dutiful Frenchman so publicly, it made sense that Camilla would return to her private residence where she could escape intense public scrutiny. The house of cards that comprised the false life around being a royal is beginning to fall and now she seems to believe it realizing the truth of her situation. Retreat may be her attempted reflex but it is clear from the rhythm of this pause that it will hold more longevity than a mere intermission. The truth is coming out and the consequences are here. Camilla did not earn her public persona based on respect, 
she earned it by being a phony. Using Charles to bring her name into the limelight at the expense of damaging the image of the royal family. Let's be real, she's not here to serve like a dedicated soldier, she's here because of her opportunistic power grabs at the expense of others. And while the rifts of her power crack open, we start to see that her supposed status as royalty was never meant to endure. What is really tragic here is not just that Camilla fell from grace, but the irreversible harm she has done to the monarchy. The royal family have been soured by her presence, the public remembering how she steamrolled into the institution and everything else that lay in her path. Her attempts to remake herself into a reformed, respectable queen consort notwithstanding, the public sees her for what she is, an outsider of the royal family. The ongoing way in which she is supported by Charles has only added to the public's dislike of her. We know that Camilla has been bad for the royals and has kept her gallivanting husband away from his own sons, as they are cast off from Blair's weekend party, poor DS, then only to have the ignorant climate chanters encouraged by her silence. The monarchy has nothing to use with her and the public distrust was only gathering momentum thanks to her shameless ambition. Camilla is everything that the monarchy can no longer afford to be, old and out of touch. The monarchy needs to change, and that change can start with removing Camilla. Royal insiders are suggesting he finally sees the writing on the wall. Camilla has overreached herself. Even the Jacques de Molay is beginning to sense that Charles here is endangering him. It goes without saying that a monarch wouldn't even contemplate the idea of separating from their partner unless there was a big problem at hand. Camilla's activism is unencumbered and marks the moment when a fundamentally necessary shakeup of the royal family may be on the precipice. If Charles is serious about future-proofing the institution, he cannot keep her. Then there is William and Catherine, the very future of the monarchy, and oh how they do need to progress without Camilla's poisonous effect. From the very beginning, in fact since before their marriage even took place, William has signified everything that Camilla does not represent. He is modern, realistic, and understands the importance of servicing people. But, unlike Camilla, he doesn't see the monarchy as a personal fiefdom where resources are available to be exploited for what one can get out of it. He knows the burden of a crown and what it entails. By contrast, Camilla has always regarded it at as a vehicle for inflate her own importance. Camilla and Catherine are about as different as two women can be. Whereas from the inside and through hard work, humility and genuine fulfillment of her public role Catherine has ultimately earned the respect of many. Catherine represents all that a modern monarch ought to represent, empathy, approachability, and perhaps most of all service. But Camilla is the exact artifact of an old world that no longer exists. Her title, which she does not deserve to hold and will continue to hold a threat to the institution as long as she's involved. A lot of people will rejoice at how Camilla's downfall is certainty material. Camilla's waning power in the face of decades of public dislike points towards a brighter future for an URI family unfettered from her damaging clutches. Dirt and scandal what a way to go be it or not her manipulation and betrayal here on earth will be forever remembered in my book as the downfall of hope where a royal consort would have earned respect with grace. From her great-grandchildren, to history maintaining a soundtrack that will remind the UK of everything while they continue to fill banks with battery farm chickens, Camilla, the queen cunt who noon will recall a queen when all said and done. Getting rid of Camilla from the royal spotlight is key not just to save the monarchy but for the royals to regain some public trust. For years, her lingering presence has been a royal pain in the ass, and her exit would usher in an era of openness. The only way the monarchy will survive is that it has to shed its skin and take a new tack that embraces integrity, and reach out to the people. Getting rid of the burdens of the past is crucial for it to succeed. Camilla being one thing that weighs heaviest of all. The public and the royal family will be breathing easy after her downfall. It has tired people just watching her influence that was never really hers to wield. They are tired of the endless scandals and controversies surrounding her. And Camilla needs to realize by now that the monarchy is bigger than any one person. In removing her, she will clear a path to a future where the family can focus on its primary own functions, 
being public servants and preserving the values that have sustained that family for hundreds of years. Although Buckingham Palace has not revealed details of the dispute, this was always going to be a monumental moment in the gradual transformation of the royal family. With the monarchy enduring a rocky patch, questions linger about what next for Charles and Camilla, as well as the implications of this rift more broadly for the royal family. Only time will tell, but one thing is for sure, the armor that covers Camilla's grace and dignity has never been showing cracks at such a rapid rate. The monarchy is at the crossroads, and it should be apparent by now that Camilla does more harm than good. Her quiet hand is deeply embedded in the marrow of the royal family and creating tensions that put at risk everything Charles and others have worked for. Her longtime observers know her still better, as the clever manipulator she is. She has used her marriage to Charles as protection and pursued individualistic values not true of the monarchy. It is baffling that Charles continues to maintain she deserves a seat next to him as the public slowly discovers her manipulations. Charles has always had Camilla as a shadow over him. His desire for her redirected attention from the truth of how their dreams are incompatible with the best interest of the royal family. This discrepancy reveals the simplest reality, loyalty is not something you can pay for or presume. Camilla over the years proved that her loyalty was always to advancing only Camilla. This argument is not just a private feud. It is an indication of a bigger battle for power in the kingdom. Charles is beginning to realize that he will not have the old goat on his side in all but her own pursuits. But, she is a risk that he needs to realize will do far more harm than good. Quite something that Camilla is attempting to sell herself as the people's choice while at the same time secretly ensuring her key cards are secured. Claiming to wield power in the palace while also showing she lives on another planet. Reveling in controversies and dramas, the chickens are now coming home to roost for her. Otherwise homosexual for portraying themselves as wholesome Catholic Christians mask a Mendez revival, but lying nonetheless. The throne, though, that she had so long coveted is now a specific target of scrutiny as the public wakes up to her carefully constructed facade. Camilla's never-ending attempts to somehow gain public acceptance failed over the years and cemented the lack of trust in her character. It is impossible not to see the stark difference between her and Catherine. Catherine is the cool woman at the party that gives us all hope for renewal in this royal family. She is beloved for her down-to-earth relationship with the public and dedication to her beginning royal duties. Conversely, Camilla's trying to make herself out as popular only serves to highlight her inauthenticity. The harder she tries to become a major player in the royal family the worse it gets. The public can see her for what she is, a manipulator who puts her own needs ahead of the monarchy's interests. As both Charles and Camilla face the cameras, all eyes are in Buckingham Palace to see what happens next. The effects of this war will echo through the generations of ruling for the monarchy. With the public watching their every move and statement as they navigate this uncertain landscape, the stakes are high, and tensions appear to be bubbling close to the surface. The real question is can Camilla keep her power? But history also reminds of the likely apex of her risque rise to power, the rift between Charles and Camilla is a story about ambition gone wrong. The public sits on the edge of their seats, hoping this royal crisis will usher in a new age of accountability and authentic leadership. But the question still stands whether Charles will have it in him to detach from Camilla when it's time for that within the royal hierarchy. One thing is obvious, the royal family need to put its past behind it for a better future. But for those who questioned her role, this moment was confirmation of their suspicions. It could be the end of her time in the royal spotlight and an opportunity for, even a need for, a new defining moment for the monarchy. The public is tired and wants change, change is coming in an era dominated by truth and transparency, the royal family learns they must change or become obsolete. Time's running out to do something about it. So we will ask whether or not Charles grows a backbone, or simply remains enmeshed in Camilla's web of treachery. He gets to choose, and the world will be watching. This is why at times like this Camilla shows her true self, unvarnished, consider everything else out of line with expected noblesse oblige.
not that her lack of tact is anything to help in further eliminating rampant suspicion. The palace's hand can't change that reality, and Camilla is just not the right fit for Queen. The British public has been doing hard time with the Camilla plotline for years now. No matter how hard her enablers try to sanitize her image, even with time, the facts about this disgraceful influencer and loser remains. Whether as Charles's mistress in scandalous fashion or a queen consort, Camilla has never been far from controversy. However, recent events have begun to highlight some of the chinks in Camilla's gilded armor. She creates a difficult situation for Princess Catherine and Princess and the very embodiments of poise, duty, and tradition. The obvious discomfort of these respected members of the royal family reveals the background tensions caused by Camilla. Catherine and Anne, who both are shiny examples of it per se, seem really rattled by Camilla's actions, not even murmurs from either about her behavior indicate serious displeasure over what she did. And all the royal PR things you might try to put on top of that will see through it, because those are such fundamental problems. Beneath that, though, is the real question, how long before Camilla abuses her boundaries again and it all comes tumbling down on the British public? Either she forgot or is conveniently ignoring the fundamental values of humility and service on which the royal family was built. Camilla seems to think that her place allows her to speak without worrying how it affects other people, that she can act with impunity. Her actions not only tarnish the monarchy, but in turn, her conduct is disrespectful to the people who will have no choice, one way or another, but to accept her as queen, however controversial she seems. Camilla taking the throne highlights both the need for the royal family to protect her image, but Princess Catherine and Princess and attempt to hold up the maintenance of any goodwill fortifying the institution. Camilla, on the other hand, has largely undermined all of these efforts and continues to show a complete lack of integrity and moral compass required for royal life. Yet here is Camilla, her past washed away like a bar of soap, now standing next to King Charles. Yet we shouldn't forget that she played a huge part in the disintegration of Charles's marriage to Princess Diana. How can anyone trust a woman who is engaged in lies and deceit to be a stabilizing force? As Camilla continues to secure her own position and power, there is nothing that any amount of titles or royal pseudonyms can change the fact that this is always at someone's expense. At the recent reception, however, Camilla's behavior was a refresher that she is still the same. You could say she has become comfortable in her role of queen consort, but as we see here once again, that's um, not quite so. The truth is that Camilla remains the same polarizing person as always, not able to align with the foundational ideals beloved by the monarchy. Open contempt for Princess Catherine and Princess and not only is a personal failing of hers, but one that the public will see as well. In all these, you wonder how she could adequately represent monarchical interests far beyond our shores. And the fact that Camilla has been around the royal family so long brings up an uncomfortable question about her with King Charles as well. Scandal has long been part of their history and they have made efforts to change this. Still many feel the painful memories of Charles's choice between charming Camilla and an ever-beloved Princess Diana. And as Camilla increasingly barges into royal business with bad manners, one starts to wonder if the king himself blinded by his loyalty for her. However, these actions have broader and troubling implications also beyond her sowing additional division within the family. They risk their status as a royal family by allowing Camilla to continue in this sort of disgraceful and degrading behavior. It's important to remember that some members of the royal family do not represent what residents would like to see, as shown by Camilla's recent antics. With Princess Catherine and Princess and nailed the hard work part for public respect, Camilla's actions have only deepened this very divide between those who do royal things and those who don't. Something will have to give, and as these events unfold in the coming weeks, many here are asking how much longer the monarchy can sustain the damage inflicted by Camilla that it's not just a source of conflict but an existential threat to the whole fucking thing, that her very presence means their family, and thus the institution itself is destined for collapse. While Camilla is behaving like a commoner, Princess Catherine and even Princess and are still exemplifying grace and integrity.
It shows that not every one of them is a god-sized king, but wearing a crown does not mean worthy of respect. Camilla continues to make the same mistakes time and again, she does not understand what her job is within the royal family, and therefore never really appreciates why this or that royal tradition matters. There's nothing but insecurity behind the audacity of Camilla and particularly the one toward Princess Catherine. And even though she is queen consort, it shows little respect for the very fundamentals of what the monarchy was built on. Not only does this conduct reflect thoughtlessness, it reveals the deep-seated insecurity of Camilla. Catherine is without question a shining light for the monarchy, given that the institution needs more than ever grace and poise fused with modernity to survive in the 21st century. On the other hand, Camilla is of a time when scandal, deception, and an unassailable sense of entitlement prevailed. If Camilla used this opportune outburst as a means to criticize Catherine's broader reach, then it only highlights the lack of willingness to adapt and her jealousy to Catherine's eclipse. It does not matter how many titles or royal roles Camilla claims, she knows it will never come close to the respect and admiration Catherine earned. Image, Karen Bailey slash AP So we are to believe Camilla is going to take on Princess N, a woman known for her fierce devotion to the crown? Her brutal work ethic and no-nonsense register to royal duties have made her probably the most esteemed member of the royal family. On the flip side, Camilla seems a bit thin in her royal thespian game with all of that dubious history and ulterior motives trailing behind her. To think that Camilla would go into some kind of competition with and over any royal duties or customs is ridiculous. True, and has earned her stripes, Camilla is still regarded with skepticism and suspicion. Camilla acts like a third-rate addition to the royal family with her constant efforts to make up for perceived deficiencies. Camilla tries to show herself as the personification of stability next to King Charles but her slip-ups and outbursts make clear how insecure she is. Her public image is still troubled by her controversial past, which includes a romance that rocked Princess Diana's marriage and sullied the monarchy. Although Camilla seems to be doing her best at asserting some semblance of authority within the royal family, her older decisions have become frequent reminders of a troubled past. What a cheek for her to choose to condemn people such as Princess Catherine and Princess Anne, who have all of those attributes in spades, attributes Camilla herself sorely misses. Camilla, now queen consort, an honor she earned under a cloud of controversy, does not have much right to call out those who have labored in the name of preserving that dignity. From the way Princess Catherine and Princess Anne maintain regal standards with poise, to Camilla's antics that never fail to remind us of who she really is. The repulsive infighting and intrigues that paved her path to the throne have discredited her, casting herself unworthy as a leader of the royal echelon. If Camilla cannot keep her cool in a situation like this, it only speaks of her lowly nature and long-term consequences for the monarchy. As Catherine and and work hard to build public trust, Camilla is acting in a manner that damages the reputation of whilst casting doubt over both the stability and tradition of. Even as Camilla locked in her position with Charles, her actions is his Achilles' heel, like he says more a liability than an ally. With inner discord in the royal home growing ever louder, how does Camilla keep going as her reputation continues to decline? While her recent scandal is widening existing divisions, it continues to lay bare the divergent fault lines with other major royal players like Princess Catherine and Princess Anne. As royal duty and public affection personified, these characters feel authentic, even as Camilla's behavior highlights her inability to assimilate into a world defined by tradition and pride. Camilla never used to trip over herself like this and all the trails are lately about, and more recently, the only spears to be dripping from her hands. Are so off base, which is embarrassing at best for anyone maintaining a royal position, much less one of its highest ranks. Every gaffe recalls her scandalous, treacherous past. But her behavior only proves she is unfit to serve as King Charles's rock. She also reduces the royal sheen with her callous and unwise comments and behavior whenever she tries to present herself as a hard-working queen. Her boldness will have repercussions much greater than rumors, as it threatens her already fragile relationships with Catherine and Anne. 
Catherine and and both have pledged to make the monarchy youthful again and earn the public trust how strange that Camilla, as an experienced royal in her own right and presumed wise woman, would even try to hammer further wedges amongst the royals while she was attempting to add some guesses of favoritism alongside with it. While the long-term fallout of this scandal is anyone's guess, insiders are saying it could be deadly for Camilla. A public image is critical for the royal family, and if she continues to push back against her royal relatives, she could risk shaking the very foundation of stability she's supposedly fighting for. In Before Images, Well Done Princess Catherine enjoys a very end duty dedicated aka the complete opposite of Camilla. Such haphazard actions on the part of Camilla put at risk Catherine's attempts to bond family and build a harmonious royal circle in the wake of turmoil created by Harry and Meghan. And as tensions rise within the royal household, if Camilla carries on being disruptive it risks undermining the unity that Catherine has worked so hard to foster. As the public waits to see how this Camilla scandal pans out, there is no doubt that the majority of us are wondering just how much longer she will be able to get away with this. The royal family tries to weather this latest storm revealing once again the tightrope between friendship and perception. Unless Camilla changes her conduct, one day she will estrange herself from the family which she had claimed on belonging to. Her actions could bring down the very pillars of her newly bestowed station and worse still usher in a harrowing consequence for a monarchy that prides itself on loyalty, respect, and togetherness. With tradition being such an important thing in the world of royals, Queen Camilla continues to do things that raise eyebrows. As she tests outer limits, her weaknesses and inadequacies become apparent and the royal family can only ride the wave of scandal holding their breath. The public is, of course, watching, and Camilla's royal ride may be nearing its end. Each mistake brings her nearer to the status of a real embarrassment for a royal house that cannot afford to pay too little attention to her ongoing provocations. Time is ticking, and everyone wants this drama to come to a close, especially for a queen who seems to have forgotten that with great power comes great responsibility. Camilla's behavior and words in this latest scandal highlight just how divided the royal family is and just how uncomfortable her presence can be. Although the rest of the royal family does their best to put on an act of unity and strength, Camilla's utter abandonment of royal protocol makes one question her right to be where Lady Fortune has placed her. It is profoundly upsetting to see a woman who has been steeped in privilege act exactly opposite of the problem with what the monarchy has historically represented, traditional ideals of modesty and service, fact-checker Keith Olbermann, making sense, in advance, of Harry and Meghan Dock, you're wrong. It is telling that she does not realize how her words and actions reflect an attitude heavily imbued with entitlement and self-interest. At a time when the monarchy is facing its greatest challenges, Having someone like Camilla who seems hell-bent on undermining all the hard work of those who actually genuinely want to restore honor and respect for the royal institution cannot help but be an unusually bad taste. Princess Catherine and Princess and appear as stoic pillars in the face of struggle, fulfilling their royal duties while both have earned public respect at large. Camilla being a constant addition to their story reveals both her insecurity and inability to understand the notion of teamwork amongst the royals and the absurd contrast between Camilla and her sharply focused and loyal royal sisters only becomes more pronounced as they perform their pompously dutiful tasks on behalf of Headgoat. It is a very interesting situation to see Camilla try settling in amongst the people who actually worked for their place and dedication to the monarchy. She could have made the royal family seem better in the public's eye, but instead her actions strip away any semblance of regard for those that encompassed what it means to perform the duties of royalty. This makes the situation not just embarrassing for Camilla but an affront to the armory of a heritage monarchy. Perhaps we should now ask ourselves how much longer the royal family will sit calmly by as Camilla continues with her disruptive behavior, when it is clear to the public what the fallout from her tantrums would be. Her actions are breeding division not nurturing the unity that is so important in order for a monarchy to survive, and the facade of an altogether royal family is starting to crack. At this time of greater examination, the hope is that royal family players keep the ship steady. At the same time, Camilla always falls short of this bar. 
The royal family is at a turning point, the most pressing challenge today is how to deal with Camilla's place. Her antics, rather than embodying majesty, come off more like a spoiled child craving attention, such behavior is the death knell to those attempting to recover the monarchy image. By comparison to Catherine and Anne, who presented themselves by controlling their actions, Camilla sounds like an outlier whose behavior contributes to a widening schism between the family members. That nonsense is making it clear that the royal family has to deal with the more immediate problem, Camilla's toxic influence. To keep their integrity, and to start the process of rebuilding public confidence they have to realize that not every monarchy is cut out for what he does. With the world keeping watch over these events, one certainly could argue that Camilla's days as a royal will now soon come to an end. We know how the Daniels family will soon find out if they can endure the consequences of her behavior or whether they go some way in standing up to the divide she creates. Only the royals can save them now, and whether Camilla goes on to destroy the monarchy with her scandalous, raunchy disarray or redeem it is up to them. In summary, it is clear the ongoing controversies surrounding Queen Camilla will not be fading away anytime soon. As each scandal hits, she walks closer to the line of what is considered appropriate royal behavior and create real concern that she may not be able to carry out her function. How much longer is the royal family going to put up with this public humiliation? That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.